Hey, what's up? I'm KBHD here, and welcome to the Bat Cave. Kinda. It's it's pretty sick. You'll see why in a second. Uh, and also, pardon the echo. Because I'm in a Bat Cave, it's super echoey, but we'll just have to make it work for this video. Because I'm holding the key to a vehicle that has never been seen before, but that we knew the unveil was coming, and I finally get to show it to you guys. So, Lucid. Lucid's been making this sedan, the Lucid Air, for a couple years now. And I actually really like the thing. I've talked about it in a video before. You can go watch that. I also may be getting a peek at the Air Sapphire. I might have already put that video up by the time this is out. But I feel like this is more important to their company. This is the Lucid Gravity. This is going to be their first SUV, a very popular segment of vehicle. This is going to be a three-row SUV. And as of right now, there's not a ton of competition in this space, but they're popping in right at the upper range of things. So I've reviewed the Rivian R1S. I've called it one of the best vehicles ever made. We also showed you the Cadillac Escalade EV, which is going to be a huge version. This, I think, is going to be somewhere in between. A little bit sporty, a little bit luxury, and a lot of high tech. So let's walk through it. So let's just start by hitting the basics. This thing is Lucid's three-row SUV. It's going to be starting to ship before the end of 2024, so before the end of next year. Uh, it should have roughly the same battery size as the Lucid Air, but this thing is very efficient. It'll have a sub 0.24 coefficient of drag, and it'll end up getting 440 plus miles of range, which is pretty sweet. They haven't told me a 0 to 60 time, but I suspect this thing will be in the threes. It'll be a pretty quick one, and it's going to be starting around $85,000 for the base version, but you'll definitely get well into six figures with Lucid's as you expect. Um, and just looking at it from this sort of front 45 angle, it does a pretty good job of not looking like a minivan, but still having the proportions of uh, a pretty compact three row SUV. I mean, Escalades, we all know what they look like. The Rivian has a pretty small second row or third row. So I'll get into all that stuff in a second, but I think, I think the move should be to start at the front and work our way back. Cause there's a ton of stuff going on with this EV. So let's start at the front. So this is the pre-release uh, prototype sort of vehicle, so it's not fully finished yet, but most of the stuff that we're looking at in this car is exactly how it'll show up when it ships to people who buy this thing. And from the front, it looks like a Lucid Air, but taller. Uh, here's the front Lucid logo. There's that nice big light strip all the way across the front, and the Lucid logo actually glows so you can see it at night, but there's also the functional arrow over to the sides. Air goes through the sides there to cool your brakes. You've got these enormous 21, I'm not even joking, 22 inch front wheels, which are staggered with 23 inch rear wheels. This is the sportiest design package. So you can get smaller wheels to probably get even better range, but those are huge wheels and very sporty. And then uh, let me get this frunk open real quick. So, okay, this prototype's frunk is now open and this is a pretty respectable front trunk, but as you can see, there's a bit of an accessory in here, which is basically a folded up seat because, uh, well, you might want to pull this off to uh, some scenic Angel's Cliff Highway or something like that and just have a seat in the front trunk and chill out. I kind of don't hate it. I, I maybe think there should be some lights up here or something to sort of illuminate where you're at, but there's, uh, there's power in here. This accessory is comfortable. I never thought I would say this, but you could hang out in the front trunk of your car and you're shielded from whatever rain that's kind of cool. Now, of course, without this accessory, you can still put groceries in the front trunk. You can still do normal front trunk things, and I think that'll work out pretty well. But I think next thing we should do is hop in the front of the car. But here we are in the driver's seat of the Lucid Gravity. And I got to say, it's a little bit different for a couple reasons. I mean, it's familiar to the Air. If you've sat in the Lucid Air, if you've seen one, you've seen the huge screen, you've seen the steering wheel, you've seen the dual display setup. And this still has that, but they've repositioned things a little bit to where the screen in front of the driver is noticeably higher up than normal, and that's on purpose. And there's an HUD in this car. It doesn't work yet in the prototype. But then this is a flatter steering wheel, so basically you have full visibility now of this entire display in front of you the entire time you're driving, and there's a bit more focus on the screens. There's still a little bit of tactile controls, though, that I like. 
high quality materials everywhere. I mean, I'm looking, you know, this armrest right here being really soft and high quality. It's got this nice stitching. This is the Tahoe interior we're looking at right now. So it's got these super soft leather seats, but also this is a tempered glass open like a cover here on top of the storage in the center console and this will actually be like spring loaded and slide back and forth in the final car then you've got some wireless chargers underneath here for your phone and if you want this whole thing slides forward and you've got more storage underneath with like these little organizers that you can move in and out so this whole center console space is nicely organized as you'd expect um, but then there are some buttons below the touchscreen here and then the touchscreen and then the touchscreen and then the touch screen. So again, don't expect Android Auto or Apple CarPlay in a Lucid anytime soon. But what you can expect is all your basic vehicle controls over here, lock, unlock, lights, wipers, etc. That's touch screen. Your main driving info in the middle when that's happening and your drive modes and your state of charge. And then over on the right is sort of the apps that move up and down between the top screen and the bottom screen. You can still swipe stuff down open stuff on the top screen, multitask, you can get navigation going up top with music down at the bottom, all that is fun. And what I like is there are customizable buttons right underneath the screen. So this is your normal temperature up and down dial, your fan speed up and down dial, but there's a customizable button here and a customizable button here that are mappable. So I like that. What I don't like as much is the steering wheel getting rid of some of the tactile controls, or I guess just changing some of the tactile controls. You might remember the Air before had these sort of wheels and these up and down knobs in the center. I thought that was really nice and clever. This is the new flatter shaped wheel for the gravity. It's not terrible, but then you've also got this sort of a touchscreen swipey thing here, which will control the menu items happening up here. And there will also be the normal like next song, previous song, volume up, volume down. That'll still work. I don't know, this might be something I have to try to get used to it, but it's a little different from the previous Lucid wheel. Other noticeable things though, this gigantic opening, this windshield goes all the way uninterrupted other than by the sun visors, back behind the driver's head like a Tesla Model X. Pretty sick, and there's also this LED light which changes colors and kind of just feels nice and modern, I like that. So if you're in different drive modes, for example, or have different themes going on, all the ambient lights in the car will change, and uh, they're reflected by whatever you want. Let's go purple. Now you've got purple lights in the interior. So I think generally my takeaway from the driver's seat is it's comfortable. It's very comfortable here. So let's get to the second row. So one thing that's nice about the Lucid Gravity, which is also the same as Lucid Air, is this back door opens 90 degrees, which is much easier to get in and out of. And this is the second row. Three seats here in this version. And uh, behind the 6.3 driver's position, I'm, I'm actually impressed. There is a good amount of room here. For a three-row SUV, this is sweet. A couple standard stuff. You have a screen back here. It doesn't work in the prototype, but that's a screen with physical controls, of course. You've got some vents over here. That's good to see. But my favorite quirk slash feature is this little tray right here. If I push hard enough, because it's a, it's a bit prototypey, but this tray comes out and locks into place like an airplane seat and then I can drop in like a laptop, tablet, vertical, horizontal. It's got these slots here. Basically, instead of putting in a screen right on the back of the seat, which would be kind of cool, I think that would also kind of age very quickly. And sometimes those systems don't look the best. Look kind of tacky to me, to be honest, but a lot of them choose to have it. I think this is actually just as comfortable. And I could put my own laptop here and a new computer here next year, and it'll always work. And when you're done, you just pop it in like that, and you're good to go. And uh, this is what the second row moving forward to let people into the third row looks like. So it's probably time for us to look back there. For the third row, there's not much to it, but I will say it is easy to get into once you have this seat forward. Uh, it is a two-seat back row. Uh, the only notable things really back here are that there is a little bit more room than I had in the back seat of the Rivian, which I'm happy about. And there's also a gigantic amount of glass over your head, which means there is a little bit of headroom, which is good for me. There's also a USB-C port back here and a little storage, and there's a cup holder on each side. It's not a terrible third row. I wouldn't want to be back here for more than about an hour long road trip or something like that, but you can fit adults in the third row like reasonably. But when you get a three row vehicle like this, you're probably a little bit more concerned with storage. So 
let's look at the storage. Let's get to the real back of the gravity. So the gravity when the trunk is open has this huge, huge opening. It kind of reminds me of the Lucid Air where the entire back opens. This time it's functional enough to give you a decent amount of space behind the third row. So this is the third row. When you put this seat down forward, there's a little bit of a lip there, but as you could probably suspect, this is a sub trunk as well. This can open up and give you a whole bunch of space underneath the trunk, and that'll actually let you fold the back two rows into the sub trunk to give you a totally flat area for much larger storage. So if you just have two rows of seats and then these seats folded down, there's much more space. You can start to fit not just groceries, but like diagonal surfboards, bicycles, things like that in the back of this thing. You can fold the second row flat, then the entire thing is a ton of storage space, and that's legitimately bicycle, <laughs> surfboard. So this is the back of the gravity, and I feel like there's also some functional things here. You can see obviously there's a button to put the seats down. There's the USB-C ports back here that I talked about over the shoulder and then all that glass up top. But yeah, there you have it. I'm very curious about how this will do and what this can possibly do for Lucid, what it'll be like to drive, what it'll be like on the road, 400 plus miles of range, lots of storage. I think this is a really interesting option. Obviously it's very pricey and it's only real competition on the, in existence right now as far as three row electric SUVs is like the Tesla Model X and the Rivian R1S. So fits right in. But we're gonna get a bunch more. We're gonna get, uh, I think, a Kia. We're gonna get the Escalade. So we'll have more options soon. But as of right now, let me know what you think of the Lucid Gravity. Is this enough to save the company? Is this enough to get the interest of people who are never gonna buy a Lucid before, even if there is no NACS? We'll chat about it in the comments. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Peace.